Yeah, so I am here today. Well, yeah, I'm in camera. <laughs> I am here today. This is Ioptron, and of course, you all know I have two mounts from Ioptron that I've used a lot for a long time. And Roger, could you tell me something about the newer mount? I bet, yeah. Like I was talking about earlier, a lot of the designs are changing to new strain wave design mounts. Happen to have a brand new mount that hasn't been shown before. This is the HAE 16. It's a alt asthma slash equatorial mount that, with a strain wave gear. Um, it's designed where it has a built-in board, so you no longer use, need a hand controller. You can operate it from a tablet. You can operate it from a smartphone. I noticed the antenna on it. Yeah, that's, it has the Wi-Fi antenna on it. Wow. Plus, you can still get a hand controller if you prefer you know, more standardized controlling. Um, very lightweight. You can pick it up with one hand, and, and this little guy can hold over 16 pounds. Wow. Yeah. And you guys are making some big stuff too, right? Yeah, we have a number of streamwave gear mounts. We have alt azimuth streamwave gear mounts, which go from range from 31 pounds capacity up to 71 pounds capacity, and they're unique in that your saddle can be moved from the from the side or mounted on top, which really lends itself to a binocular mount. So they're real popular binocular users. And then we have more traditional equatorial mounts in streamwave gear all the way up to the HA69, which is another new product um, that can carry up to 69 pounds and it has optional iMate, so you can get a, a computer built into the into the mount itself that can control your other equipment, your cameras, your, your uh, filter wheels, all that stuff. And that'll do like go-to, right, and pointing as well? Absolutely, full go-to. Uh, it has its own, own memory and a hand control, about 212,000 objects, but you can run it through your computer or any, any software that you choose. Now, uh, I know a lot of your strain wave mounts now are starting to have, what is it, uh, wiring that goes through the mount so that you have a port right yeah, on the actual head? We've always been more advanced in as how we provide cable management, mm -hmm. and the various mounts do have controls which go through the mount and up to the saddle, so you have a few wires floating, which everyone uses. makes things a little more safer, a little more, more reliable. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know, I love good cable management, and yeah, uh, that's one feature that I lack on mine. I really like to update. So now tell me, you've done some hybrid ones too, right? Hybrid strain waves? Yeah, the original designs were hybrid. Actually, the, the 16 is a hybrid, which okay. means it has the uh, traditional worm gear along with the strain wave gear. The reason we did this, a most of the HAs are a dual strain wave, but with this one we did it for weight reasons. Okay. One of the nice things though about the hybrids and having the, the traditional worm gear versus both strain wave gears. If you're doing long-term off-axis guider exposing, mm -hmm. where you need more accurate tracking during the, during the actual exposure, the, um, the worm gear lends itself to that application. Okay. All right. Uh, Roger, thank you so much. Coming by, I appreciate it. Good no problem. Thanks. We, got, we got a fun fact for you here. I'm gonna shoot into this. this, this. Where strain wave gears were invented? Well, we're, Optron's based in Woburn, Massachusetts, and the strain wave gear, which is the basis of all this new modern type of unbalanced payload mounts, was developed in Beverly, Massachusetts. Yeah, so, so not far from here. Local technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah.